Hi everyone. Uh, I just got back about an hour ago from uh, my uh, local Barnes & Noble uh, taking advantage of the Criterion 50% off sale. Uh, it's a great, it was a great retail experience because I was looking for seven titles. I couldn't find three of them and uh, the uh, sales uh, clerk came to my rescue. She looked and she looked and she looked. She didn't give it up, give up and finally she found the other three because uh, they hadn't gone back through them yet. To, uh, I was there first thing uh, in the morning. They hadn't gone back through there because she said uh, people take them out and they put them back in the wrong spot. But we, it was it was a, it was a nice uh, experience, and they still have lots of Criterion's there, which is really great. Uh, I went a little bit overboard, uh, but my TBR is down to zero, no longer. So I've got uh, I've got some movies to watch for the next. Uh, uh, three weeks or so. Um, before I start with what I got, uh, I, I, I did a video, a, um, a uh, uh, recommendation video um, uh, a couple few days ago, and I, me I forgot to mention another 2022 Criterion release, Le Circle Rouge, uh, Jean-Pierre Melville crime film uh, with a great cast, Elaine Delon, Jean-Marie Vellante, Yves Montan, uh, it's, uh, this is the 4K UHD, and um, it looked absolutely magnificent, at least it did when I still had my <laughs> 4K UHD TV. It used to be over in that spot over there uh, before, it went, uh, before it went kaput. Um, so uh, anyways, let's get to the titles that I, I picked up, and I'm really excited to show you some of these. And, and uh, most of these are, again, 2022 recent releases. First up... This is the Michael Powell and Mark Pressburger adaptation of uh, Jacques Offenbach's uh, Tales of Hoffman, uh, an opera from, I think, the 1880s, containing some of the most beautiful music you ever want to hear, uh, especially the Barcarolle. I, I remember when I saw this. I, I, I saw this. This was a difficult film to see back in the repertory theater days and uh, I belonged to a film society in Philadelphia at Temple University, uh, and they had a great curator, and, and he was able to find an absolutely immaculate print of Tales of Hoffman. And we went from our normal viewing room to the big auditorium, which was the old auditorium where Mike Douglas, for those of you who may remember Mike Douglas, when he made, it filmed his show from Philadelphia. And it was a packed audience, and just everybody was just mesmerized, not just by the music, but by, by uh, Powell and Pressburger's imaginative uh, staging of it. I'm not a big opera fan but uh, uh, at all. I know very little about it, but uh, this is, uh, yeah, I don't think you have to be an opera buff to really appreciate the, ta the Tales of Hoffman. And it includes a archival uh, commentary with Martin Scorsese and film critic Bruce Etter. And according to the blurb, Bruce Etter has has updated uh, his, his commentary. There's also an interview with uh, George Romero <laughs> of Night of the Living Dead. You wouldn't think George Romero would be on a uh, Tales of Hoffman opera uh, uh, Blu-ray, so I'm kind of interested to see, there must be a reason, and uh, I'm kind of interested to see what that reason might be. Next up, another 2022 20, recent release around midnight. This is from Bertrand Tavernier, 1986 movie. Uh, telling the story of real-life uh, uh, jazz sax uh, player Dexter Gordon, and uh, set in 1950s uh, uh, Paris uh, with a Herbie Hancock score. Uh, Tavernier is uh, is one of my favorite directors, French directors, and uh, but uh, he doesn't get a lot of attention. And uh, he had um, Coup de Torchon, I believe. I think that's out of print. I think his best film, uh, but <clears throat> uh, other people believe his best film is Sunday in the Country. I have no, I have no argument with them. I'm, this is the Kino. Uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of Bernard Travenier, um films uh, from uh, that are currently uh, in the Kino uh, Spring into Summer sale, which ends July 18th. I'm filming this on July 5th, so about a couple weeks left to go. Uh, this is an absolutely beautiful film, and also uh, I, I also have Bertrand Travenier's Journeys Through French Cinema. I did a 
a video on this and Sunday in the Country, but this video, this, uh, this Blu-ray, uh, the video uh, that I made of it has, I think, the fewest number of views <laughs> of any video, and I've done a lot of videos in the last couple of years. And this is, uh, I think, this is also on sale. I think it's twenty bucks now, but I think it's almost eight hours. I think it's eight fifty-minute uh, uh, segments. Uh, Tavernier is a, not just a terrific director; he was a great historian and did a lot of documentaries. So you see uh, documentaries on on cinema, and you get to he shows you a lot of clips, and it's a very personal journey uh, through French cinema. Um, and then I also got. Joe Losey's uh, Mr. Klein. Again, we get Alain Delon. Um, and this is from 1976. It's a uh, set during World War II. Alain Delon plays a man who has a, uh, during a roundup of Jewish people, uh, and he, there is a man with his name who is Jewish, and he is he has to root him out because he's being suspected as the Mr. Klein that, that is being rounded up uh, and, and presumably sent, sent, to a, uh, uh, sent to one of the camps. So, and this is Losey, so it's a true life story. I'm a big Joe Losey fan, so I'm going to show you a, um, I'm going to show you a, another Kino Secret Ceremony, one of my favorite Losey films, uh, <laughs> that is also in the Kino sale. I've also done a video on this. But moving on with Criterions, next one up is Rouge, and this is from Hong Kong, uh, uh, movie 1987, directed by Stanley Kwan. This is a movie I know nothing about. Uh, I, I'm not even going to read the blurb before, <laughs> before I watch the film. It is. It does have a number of extras. Stanley Kwan was uh, had a conversation on the Both People supplements. I found him very uh, uh, engaging. And when you see somebody like that, you say, "I wonder what kind of movies he's making." And I don't know that Stanley Kwan has any other movies in Region A, at least, uh, available on Blu-ray. So I'm looking forward to this. It's got a really uh, nice design. Um, and um, again, I, I don't, I'm not going to say much about it. Uh, it. It's not loaded with extras, but uh, because I don't want, really want to know anything about it. <laughs> so every once in a while, there are movies like that. Uh, next up, these last, uh, these, this, these next two are our um, older Criterion releases, and this is uh, Jan Troll's um, uh, "The Emigrants in the New Land." from 1971, 1972. I, I particularly wanted The New Land because, um, uh, which is the sequel to The Immigrants because it's part of my 1972 uh, series. Um, and, and this says, uh, this, this does have quite a few good looking, uh, uh, good looking extras including an introduction by John Simon. I don't know if you guys know who John Simon was, but he was one of the most crusty and, and mean spirit film critics of all time. He was a really good writer, though, <laughs> uh, and he hardly liked anything. And he, you know, and he was very mean towards actors and uh, directors. He, you know, he he was a strange character. He, he lived a long time, and he had a he had a website that I, I know, he he passed away a few years ago, but he had a website where he would, he would update and he was still as harassing. He was a little bit, he, he was a little bit mellowed even. He, 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 I remember reading one column where he said about how he always knocked Woody Allen movies, but in his old age, on Simon's old age and Woody Allen's old age, he's mellowed on Woody Allen. And you know, there are a couple good films in there, but he was a tough critic to, uh, to um, pin down I wonder. I wonder why this is one of the movies that got his very rare, uh, uh, his rare, very rare thumbs up. I assume he's doing an intro to a film, uh, uh, and then this, this I presume. I, this is, I've, ne I've never seen either of these two films, and I presume that this is set in the U.S. Again, I'm not reading much of the blurb. Uh, I just took a, a look at the um, at the extras. Um, but we get uh, two biggies in Max von Sydow, 
Leave Omen, uh, beautiful looking. Uh, I love it when they put artwork on the on the discs. This was a Blu-ray DVD um, edition. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing something I've, I've never seen before. Uh, so I think this is the second one that I haven't seen. The, and the next one I have seen. And I'm really surprised that all of a sudden I had an urge to get Straw Dogs, <laughs> by, directed by Sam Peckinpah in 1971. Um, and um, because I'm not a Peckinpah fan, I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I really respect and I, I've enjoyed some of his films, but I'm not a big fan of that kind of ultra-violent, uh, balletic, uh, kind of ultra-violent uh, uh, stuff that, that Peckinpah often does, plus a lot of times I think his narratives get a little bit flabby and he kind of compensates with these great pictorial shots. Uh, but he's an important director for sure. And I really got this, and this is the one movie I think that is really tight. It's very, I don't know, that I don't think there was any, uh, he, he, was, he, he was often at odds with his producers and uh, he would, um, you know, they would take movies out of his hands, re-edit him. I don't think they did this here. This is a really tight movie. Um, and I, but I really got it because Stephen Prince, I noticed that Stephen Prince does the commentary on Straw Dogs and he, he's just a great, he, he wrote a book on Masaki Kobayashi that I, I touted last year in the series I did on that film director. And he also wrote a book on Sam Peckinpah called Savage Cinema, Sam Peckinpah and the Rise of Ultraviolent Movies. Uh, of course, this is Dustin Hoffman on the cover, and, and the, the film was, is, was uh, I guess it's uh, kind of scandalous today in its treatment of, uh, there's a very infamous rape scene in the film, uh, and uh, Dustin Hoffman married to Susan George, and he is forced to Dustin Hoffman, a, a kind of nerdish uh, uh, professor uh, married to this beautiful young woman who has to uh, protect his house. <laughs> if you've ever seen the movie, the, the, uh, the ultraviolence in the, in the end of this movie is, is, quite, uh, is, is quite powerful, as well as the rape scene. And, and again, I, I, I not only do I not like ultraviolence, I'm not very fond of, uh, I'm not very fond of violence <laughs> against women, but this is a really strange, um, depiction uh, and uh, you know it, it upset people in 1972 and, and certainly or 1971 and certainly 51 years later it, it's even more uh, it can be even more upsetting so there's definitely got to be trigger warnings if you're upset by these things but it is, as a filmmaker Peck and Paul is, 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 uh, is a very interesting filmmaker uh, no doubt about that uh, so the last movie I picked up, and this one really surprised me too. Straw Dog surprised me. This surprised me even more. I picked up The Worst Person in the World, and I hardly have any recent movies. I have very few videos on recent movies. Some reason, and this is a, what is this, Norwegian, I believe, Joaquin Trier. Never seen any of his films. Uh, again, I, I, I don't know anything much about the movie, uh, but and the Criterion uh, Closet, the most recent Criterion Closet, uh, actress, I'm gonna mess up her name, Renata Rainsby, who is the star of this film and won Best Actress at the Cannes Film Festival. She was in the closet picking out, and I don't know if you've ever seen those episodes, it's about a five or six minute uh, uh, recording of her going into the Criterion Closet where all the Criterions are, you just turn around there, you're surrounded by and then they pick them pick them out and I found her very engaging <laughs> and my heart went a little pitter patter and that's really all sometimes it takes uh, for me to pick up a movie um, especially a movie I don't know anything about uh, and uh, you know as always I just love Criterion artwork I know some people think it's uh, it's a little bit out there but it's it's always uh, it's always different always unique always something to to look at and I, I know on online forums and all oh, the worst you know I don't know what they think about this artwork but I like it a lot okay so that should do it I think yes it will uh, so I've got uh, seven pickups eight movies um, 
I'm hoping that if you're participating in the sale, you're having a lot of fun. I was a lot of fun. And again, I say I'm not going to go back, but it goes. The sale goes to July 31st. I don't know. I might weekend and get a couple more later on in the month. I know summertime, uh, one of my favorite David Lean, Catherine Hepper movies is coming out on Blu-ray. Uh, so um, I might go back to pick that up. But I know if I do, there's going to be two or three others as well. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who listened. Comments are welcome. Uh, let me know any movies that you've uh, picked up in the sale or you want to get. Um, you guys, take care. <laughs>